um, I've talked about this previously on multiple videos and I kept banging on the fact that a lot of brands do not market their creative director simply because they think that their creative director has the magic, has the power to, you know, woo the audience or to, you know, help people connect the dots and figure out why things are happening. Which I think is, you know, really not fair. Like, um, one example that I keep talking about recently is Sean McGurr. Is Sean McGurr a good designer? I'm, I'm not familiar with his work, not gonna lie. Um, but from recent two collections at Alexander McQueen, I can see that he has a commercial sense. I can see that he's trying to, um, whatever boardroom VPs are telling him to do, he's trying to incorporate that, like, a bit of weird Alexander McQueen, like, signature weirdness um, into, like, it products, into, you know, products that's like, oh, Alexander McQueen, like, armadillo shoes with the, but instead of armadillo shoes, it's the, the tassel, like, hoof loafer stuff. So I can see that Sean has a kind of like a business mind or commercial mindset approaching the brand. But the problem here is the audience does not understand why things are happening at the brand right now. And one one thing that a lot of people keep hanging on to, those who are into fashion, I'm talking about those who are into fashion, they're holding on to the fact that Alexander McQueen said to burn the brand down when he's not around anymore. To that, I say it's kind of useless to hold on to that thought because Sarah Burton has been with the brand for 13 years and she has successfully carved out her own path under the name Alexander McQueen. And she had a tough, tough job because Alexander McQueen left behind such a strong legacy and she was able to navigate through that using her signature which is sharp tailoring uh i'd say minimalism but like symbols bold patterns bold colors sometimes to to kind of supplement her tailoring and then make alexander mcqueen the brand combined with sarah burton's signature um to, you know, as I said, carve her own path. And that, to me, visually worked really well because I wasn't, like, you know, super influenced by Alexander McQueen's legacy beside the fact that I read a lot about his stories. I wasn't, you know, super into fashion when he was alive. So I didn't know, I wasn't engulfed in that magic. So to look at Sarah Burton's work is easy for me to you know, separate one with the other. I know that she is not trying to copy or blindly uh, try to keep Alexander, Alexander McQueen's spirit alive. She's doing her own thing under the brand name Alexander McQueen. And after 13 years, people are still kind of blind to the fact that she is not trying to remake Alexander McQueen. So now Sean is in the brand Obviously, people's immediate thought when this new director, creative director came, is to, oh, can he live up to Alexander McQueen's standard? Brother, what about Sarah Burton? That literally kept the brand alive. Literally kept the brand alive for the past 13 years. But beside the point, because people have such a strong notion of what Alexander McQueen the brand is, Sean McGurr, someone relatively unknown to many people even for those who are into fashion to just throw this person into the sea and just hope that he's uh, he he can stay afloat without doing anything to market why he's doing things a certain way without helping him brand himself without helping him uh, communicate across why Sean McGurr right now is doing things the way he's doing. He's not trying to copy anyone. He's trying to maybe take a piece here, take a piece there, take a page out of Sarah Burton's book, take a page out of Alexander McQueen's book, and then also combine with his own signature to make um, this new side of Alexander McQueen work. Now, that is a common thing across many brands that has a strong story 
associated with one designer. Let's say Helmut Lang, and then Peter Do joined. Like everyone was like comparing him with Helmut Lang's work back in the '90s. Obviously, it's unfair. It's an unfair comparison. But but when you get the job to try to, you know, uh, keep the brand legacy going, obviously people are gonna compare you. But it's not a fair comparison. Even though Peter Do's work, like his first collection, you see a lot of references. It's still not. I'd say it's still not up to standard of how good his collections are at his own brand. It's similar uh, design languages, but at Helmut Lang, I feel like he lost himself a little bit. And that's not what we want to see. We want to see Peter Doe at Helmut Lang. We don't want to see Helmut Lang number two or anyone just come into the brand, try to create Helmut Lang number two, three, and four. You know what I mean? So brands like that with, with a strong legacy connected with a previous designer... The marketing team of the brand needs to do a bit more work around the designers, like the new creative director's life, around who they are. Let's say talk a little bit about their design background. I don't know, like talk behind the scene reels of how they are trying to recreate something, but also incorporate their own vision into it. This is what I want to see at Alexander McQueen. This is what I want to see at Helmut Lang. Can I just add that Peter Doe himself is so good at marketing himself. He, I don't, I don't know if it's a fair thing to say or a entirely accurate to say, to thing to say, but from my perspective, he is doing more marketing work than the brand is doing. Uh, he's doing more. He's active marketing work than the brand itself. Helmut Lang. On the other hand, another brand that I really like or has been really obsessed with recently is Chloe. Now Chloe has been has been through a lot of designers, and each designer has their own thing. But one of the most famous is definitely Karl Lagerfeld. But still, Chloe is not Karl's thing. Karl made Chloe his own thing, right? So looking back Chloe's uh, history and legacy, you would not hold Shamita Kamali's current work to and 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 pit it directly against. Carl's work because first of all it's not productive it's not a productive uh comparison at all because why are you doing that you know what I mean it's, it's Chloe Chloe has a vibe Chloe has that like like a you know uh uh kind of whimsical bohemian kind of quiet Parisian like epitome uh Parisian uh yeah bohemian vibe so you would use that as a parameter and to judge Shamina's work you wouldn't hold Carl's work once again, even though he was the one that was, he was the face of Chloe for the longest time. But because of that, because it's a brand identity that a lot of designers have been through and a lot of designers have come to the brand and try to recreate in their own way. And that's why when Shamina joined the brand and she is doing a phenomenal job, by the way, she did not require a lot of marketing around herself. Her work is strong enough to let the audience know that she is hitting the target, like the aesthetic target, hitting the brand identity target, and she is also creating things that I'd say previously never been done before in, in that way in the Chloe history. So seeing these, these two examples, Chloe, Alexander McQueen right now, you see why one side, which is Sean McGurr, needed a bit more work around like need a bit more help around helping the audience to understand to inform the audience why Sean McGurr is doing his thing his way right now informing why this is a good pick hopefully um and helping people understand that hey this is Alexander McQueen brand but Alexander McQueen is not here anymore and if y'all want to still you know hold on to the idea that this is Alexander McQueen's brand, then I, I don't know what to say. You're, you're going to be disappointed. You know what I mean? Help people understand. In a situation like Sean McGurr, you know, trying to uh, uh, continue a, a legacy so strong, so brand identity so strong that basically virtually no clothes can ever even be close to that point because Alexander McQueen's work was so, so personal. 
we need a bit more marketing work to help Sean, I guess, succeed in a brand. That's what I want to talk about. If you wanna, if you wanna put a creative director at the forefront of a brand, if you wanna make them a star, you better treat them like a star. You better understand that people look to them um, for understanding, for guidance, for context. And in 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 the situation where I say eighty percent of people, consumers, who are not aware of what who is designing things, who you know they don't care, they don't care who's designing things, but they care about the brand. They care about this brand because they like the brand and they've, you know, been um, accustomed to what they put out. Imagine going through 13 years of Sarah Burton's work, or you, you've been seeing for the past 13 years, you know, really great tailoring, minimalist, or not so minimalist, but more minimalist than Sean McGurr's work. And all of a sudden, hard cut jump to kind of like weird silhouette like that, you know, thing, the, the hourglass thing that Sean McGurr did, or other stuff that he's currently doing super different from Sarah Burton's and as a consumer that don't know who's designing what you'd be you'd be thinking what why 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 is Alexander McQueen doing this right now out of nowhere I was I was I was you know expecting suits and blazers and you know sharp cut uh, tailoring and like spiral zippers what, what was going on even then even the person that don't care about creative directors there's there's a big disconnection right now in terms of the visual, in terms of the product, right? Help people understand, that's what I'm saying. And then sales, obviously, hopefully, the designer's also creating good work. Sales will come, but, you know, help people understand. 